While investing in the stock market, two things are most important. Fundamentals of the company and valuations of the company. Ideally, you would want to invest in companies that are fundamentally strong and available at attractive valuation. In fact, there is a famous quote from Warren Buffett. He says, whether we are talking about stocks or socks, I like buying quality merchandise when it is marked down. But the biggest question is, how to identify if the company is overvalued, undervalued or fairly valued? Hello everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my personal finance academy where I explain everything about money management in layman's language. In this video, I will teach you how you can identify the valuation of the company within a few minutes. So let's get started. Today, MRF share is available at Rs. 82,000. Whereas Apollo Tire is available for rupees 225. Now, if I ask you which share is costly, some of you might answer that MRF is very costly as compared to Apollo Tire, right? That's wrong. Many investors new to the world of stock market end up deciding the valuation of the company based on the stock price, which is wrong. So, what is the right way to check the valuation of a company? The most popular formula to understand the valuation of the company is P-E ratio. It is also known as price to earning ratio. Now let's try to understand what exactly is P-E ratio and why it is so important. If I ask you as an investor, what is the most important criteria to gauge the performance of the company? The answer is earning. At the end of the day, you are interested to know how much profit company has generated. Isn't it? So profits of the company should ideally decide whether you should invest in the company or not. If the profits are increasing, more people would be interested in investing in the company. So this would increase the demand for the company and eventually the share price. If the profits are falling, then people would like to sell their share which would eventually increase the supply and lower the demand and result in fall in the share price. In short, the share price should ideally move in relation with the earning. Hence, you have a P ratio which is calculated as price per share divided by earnings per share. Now in an ideal world, the share price should move with the earnings. But that doesn't happen in the real world. Sometimes the price go up much above the earnings. This could be due to multiple reasons like macro environment including government policy, lot of inflow of money or micro factors like expectation of better earning in the future or sometimes just without any reason. And sometimes the price fall even though the earnings are good. For example, due to COVID, the market crashed and the share price of every company fell down irrespective of their earnings. So let's say if the price per share or share price of the company is rupees 150 and its earning per share is rupees 5, then you can say that the P ratio of the company is 30. In other words, you can also say that investors are willing to pay rupees 30 per share for earnings of 1 rupee per share. Tomorrow, if the share price of the company becomes 180 and earnings remain the same, that is rupees 5 per share, then the P ratio would become 36. And if the share price falls to rupees 125 and earnings remains the same, then P ratio would become 25. Please note that the share price of a company changes every single day. Hence, P will change accordingly. But the earning changes quarterly based on the quarterly result. Normally, the earnings are considered for the last four quarter. Many people get confused and consider the P ratio based on the last financial year. For example, currently we are in March 2021. Now we don't have complete earning for FY21. It doesn't mean we need to take FY20 earnings. We need to take the last four quarter of data. As of today, we have earnings till December 20. So we need to take last four quarters that is March 20, July 20, September 20 and December 20. This would give the latest PE ratio. Now next question is, how to know if a PE of 25, 30 or 35 is overvalued or undervalued? To get the answer for this question, you need to do two things. 
Now this is very important. First, check the P ratio of the company in the last 3 to 5 years and identify the median P. Then compare the current P with the median P. If the current P is more than the median P, then you can say that company is overvalued. And if the current P is less than the median P, then you can say that the company is undervalued. Let's take three real world examples. If you look at the ITC P ratio movement, its median P in last five years is 30.7. Currently it is trading at a P ratio of 19.6. So ITC is trading at much lower level as compared to its five year median P. In July 17, it was at the P of 41. But since then, the PE has fallen. So ITC is looking undervalued at current levels. If you look at the HDFC Bank PE ratio movement, its median PE in last 5 years is 27.9. Currently, it is trading at a PE ratio of 26.7. So HDFC Bank is trading at similar levels as compared to its 5 year median PE. That makes HDFC Bank a fairly valued stock. During COVID, HDFC Bank share price tanked and P touched a level of 16.9, making it highly undervalued. That was a golden opportunity to invest. Although HDFC Bank is still a good buy at current valuation. If you look at the jubilant foodwork P ratio movement, its median P in last 5 years is 77. Currently, it is trading at a P ratio of 227. So Jubilant Foodwork is trading at much higher level as compared to its 5 year median P. That makes it a highly overvalued stock. Now secondly, you need to look at the P ratio of the industry. For example, if Infosys is trading at a P of 25, then what is the P ratio of entire IT industry? Ideally, there should not be too much of a difference if the companies are at par. For example, if you want to compare Infosys P with industry, then you can look at the P-E ratio of TCS, Wipro and HCL that are at par with Infosys. This would give you an idea of the P movement of the stock as compared to other companies in the same sector. Now there could be a case where P-E ratio of some companies are on higher side as compared to other companies. It is mainly because of their high earning potential in the future. For example, let's say there is a company which is currently trading at a P-E of 15. But the future of the company is not too bright. On the other side, there is a company which is currently trading at a PE of 50. But it is relatively small company with amazing growth prospect. Now which one would you choose? In that case, you should know the PEG ratio. What is PEG ratio? It is calculated as PE divided by its future earning growth. If a company A has a PE of 15, but the future growth potential in earning is 5%, then PEG ratio is 3. Whereas, if a company B has a PE ratio of 40, but the future growth potential on earning is 20%, then PEG ratio is 2. In this case, company B is undervalued as compared to company A. Even though PE of company B is on higher side as compared to company A. Normally, a PEG ratio of less than 1 is ideal. But it is extremely difficult to find great company with PEG ratio of less than 1. So you can consider PEG ratio of less than 2 as undervalued or fairly valued. For example, ITC has a PEG ratio of 1.9, SDFC Bank has a PEG ratio of 1.3 and Jubilant Foodwork has a PEG ratio of 10.3. So ITC and SDFC Bank are looking fairly valued and Jubilant Foodwork is looking overvalued with PEG ratio as well. Friends, please note if the earnings of the company are negative, then you can't use PE ratio. It means that if there is company which is in loss, then you can't calculate its PE ratio. You can visit websites like screener.in where you can get the details like PE ratio, PEG ratio, etc. Now question is, when PE ratio doesn't work? Although P ratio is the most popular and widely used ratio to gauge the valuation of the company, there can be instances where P ratio doesn't work or rather doesn't show the clear picture of valuation. For example, due to COVID, the earnings of the company tanked, but the prices increased in the last one year. In that case, the P became very high. 
Now in this situation, it is difficult to say that the company is overvalued or undervalued. It is because COVID was an exceptional situation and it has nothing to do with company's performance. If the earning fall due to company's performance, then certainly there is a problem. But COVID was external situation. For example, IRCTC is currently trading at a P ratio of 130, but its median P of last one year is 68. But this high P is mainly due to COVID where earnings of IRCTC fell down drastically and hence the P went up. So in that case, you need to look at future earnings. You need to think what is the earning company will generate in the future. To do that, you can also take an average of historical earning growth. So if the annual earning of the company is 50, then 55, then 60, so you can say that company's earnings are growing at 10%. And you can assume that the next turning should be 66. But this is only applicable for companies whose performance gets impacted due to external reasons like COVID. Please note that a P of less than its median doesn't always mean that the company is undervalued. There could be some problem within the company. And hence, investors are selling the share with the expectation that the future earning will fall. Likewise, a company can have high PE than its median PE where investors are buying the share with the expectation that the earnings will increase in the future. So you need to make sure that you do an in-depth research and not just invest or exit simply based on PE ratio. So in this video, we discussed about how to check the valuation of the company. I hope this would help you identify good companies at attractive valuation and avoid companies trading at higher valuation. If you think that this video is really helpful, do share it with your friends. I will see you with another video. Till then, take care.